All right, with this forecast video update on this Wednesday, September the 22nd, this is the evening edition. I am Josh Brown. I hope that you all had a wonderful day. And I have to say, it's just been really just another warm and sticky day here across Central Florida, but we didn't, we didn't see a whole lot of rain uh, earlier today like we saw yesterday and even also on Monday when we had some pretty active weather. But there are still some showers and storms right now that are happening right now here across portions of Central Florida this evening, but they will be they will not be lasting for much longer. But uh, we're also tracking a cold front that's going to roll in as we head towards uh, the day tomorrow and even into today on Friday, because behind it, we're talking about some cool, slightly cool conditions, that is, and also some some drier conditions, too. Plus, we're also watching the tropics uh, closely in the Atlantic, so we'll have that update here in just a little bit. But let's go ahead and take a look what's happening right now on the radar and see where these uh, storms are at this evening. And as you can see right now, it's in mostly in civil areas. Not everybody has seen rain this evening, but we'll go ahead and zoom in first, first of all into Orange County right now because that's where the heaviest of the rain is at at this uh, 8 o'clock hour. Right now, the heaviest is basically just to the south of downtown Orlando, so right near uh, Edgewood. Pine Castle, Bell, Bell Isle, uh, that's where the heaviest of the rain is at right now. And the same thing right along the Beachline Expressway. There's some, there's some pretty decent uh, heavy downpours out there right now. And that extends all the way down towards the 417 Turnpike. So this is so this is the only area that is uh, seeing some heavier showers and some storms uh, at this hour. Plus, we got some more heavier showers back over towards uh, near Dr. Phillips and right back into Disney. So, so, uh, so yeah. So a little bit uh, wet out there uh, at this hour. And as we as we pan to the south, excuse me, a little farther south into Osceola County, got some more heavier showers right now happening there. Basically one that's just to the south of Kissimmee and the other right along the Florida's Turnpike, just to the south of St. Cloud. And again, just to, just to note that, that these storms are not severe, but it's producing some thunder, lightning, and some locally heavy downpours, I guess you can say. Also, if we go pan down a little more south, there's also some more rain happening uh, right down towards the southern portions of Polk County. And some are, are some of them are producing some heavy downpours, especially right uh, along the west of 27. This is just to the south of Lake Wales, so so some heavier rain there this evening. And uh, and we also and there's also some more showers right now uh, back down towards uh, the Bardo community community. But it's not just Orange, Osceola, and Polk counties that are seeing some heavier showers at the moment, but there's also some more showers and storms as we pan back up to the north as we zoom in closer into southern Seminole County, because that's where the heaviest of the rain is at right now, basically in and around the Winter Springs and the Oviedo communities. So a little bit of some heavier activity at the moment, and also the same story up and around the southern part of Volusia County near Lake Hardy. So some heavier storms uh, too. And as I pan also up to the northwest just a little bit, there's also there's also the same thing with some heavier uh, action of showers and storms right into eastern Marion County. But as I go, as I go ahead and wind up the big picture, I'm going to show you where these storms are heading to uh, right now, because some of you are maybe wondering uh, if for those of you that are not that are not seeing rain right now, some of you are wondering if you're going to get any. Well, well, let's go ahead and, tur and tur turn the radar in motion and show you where the rain is heading to. And it looks like it is. Uh... Sorry, I was, checking, I was checking my phone. But but yeah, it shows that the storms are moving a bit, uh, at least slowly west to east, as you can see, at about, we'll say, 35 to 40 miles per hour. And it will stay that way again for the next uh, few hours. So if you got any plans this evening, again, just uh, take a poncho. But just note that it's not going to rain all night long. Since that it'll just it, since that it'll be uh, just some it'll just be, you know, just a quick mover. So, so it will not last much longer. All right, uh, let's see. We got uh, Mike Pierce who just popped in in the house this evening. Good to have you. And uh, see that you're checking in from Montreal, Canada. I, I see. And I hope you're doing well as well, sir. And thank you again for stopping by and saying hi. I do really appreciate it. All right, so let's go back. Let's go zoom back in into Orange County and do some tracking with these uh, storms. So I'm going to show you who will be next in line to be uh, getting some of that rain, the heaviest, of, the heaviest of the rain, that is. And again, this one is moving due east here. We'll put this here at about 45 miles per hour so we can get some uh, uh, at least civil areas that can be on the list of the uh, storm track. 
And, uh, and looks like there's not a list there, so I'll go ahead and expand that uh, a little tighter. The storm track, that is. And as I go ahead and fix the timing of the track of the storm, it's already 8.03. Well, it seems like it should be a packed theme. Places like, uh, uh, I'm going to butcher this, uh, we, uh, Wawahodi? I don't know. <laughs> so, so, so this is a pretty interesting uh, name for a city in central Florida, but I, I don't know if I pronounced it correct. But if I did, then I apologize. But anyways, it looks like it should be affecting that area at about 814 in Wedgefield at 815. So hence a few guys over in eastern Orange County that you could see some heavier showers that may move in in just a little bit, unless if it starts to weaken uh, pretty quick. And also we'll do the same thing up here in Seminole County, where again, there's some heavier showers and storms between Winter Springs and Oviedo. Do another track on that uh, right now, again, as it moves from west to east. Again, we'll put this here at about, uh, well, actually tighter, because again, we want to get a, a better list of cities that could be in the path of these storms, it looks like uh, Mims could see some storms that may roll in at about 814 and Titusville at 815. But as I expand the list here, it seems like it should be affecting South Mirror at 810, Turnbull at 813. Let's see, LaGrange at 814. Same thing goes for the Wiley community and also for East Mims and JJ. Whispering Hill Canyon at 815 and Allenhurst at 817. So these are mostly areas in northern Brevard County that could see uh, some heavier downpours in the next uh, several minutes or so. So again, just a heads up. And again, these storms should not last uh, any much longer. But let's go ahead and down towards Osceola County, because like I've said before, there are some more showers and thunder showers uh, between, at least south between Kissimmee and St. Cloud in two areas. But again, I'll do the same thing, do some more tracking with that as it moves again due east here at uh, uh, 35 to 40, but if I but, but if I put the uh, storm track a bit tighter, farther tighter, that is, we can get a better list of locations that could be in the path of these heavier showers. And let me fix the track, the storm tracking time, first of all, because it's 8.05. And that should be affecting uh, the Holopaw area at 8.13 and Deer Park at 8.19. That's basically just right along the 192 corridor in the eastern corridor corner of Osceola County. So if you live in these areas, again, just a heads up that you could see some uh, heavier rain that may move in uh, in just a little bit later. And we'll also do another track right here uh, that's located, uh, at least for the heavier shower, that is, that is just south of downtown Kissimmee. Again, moving due east here at 40 to 45. And I guess I have to expand that uh, tighter. And it uh, seems like uh, the Harmony and Holopaw communities could see uh, some heavier showers a little bit later, too. That's for the uh, second batch that is coming in south of Kissimmee. So it looks like Harmony could see another batch of heavier showers at 815 and Holopaw, possibly at about 817 as well. So so heads up for these uh, locations, too. That range should move in in just a little bit. But uh, back up into Marion County. Because like I said, there's more, so there's some more areas of showers and a couple of storms this evening too. And uh, I'll go ahead and do some more tracking also. We'll put, we'll put one right here that is located just in the northeast part of the county. Again, it's moving to the same direction, moving from west to east at 35 to 40. But if, if we expand this uh, even tighter or farther, that could give us, give us a better uh, list of locations that could be in the path of that heavier shower. So it seems like uh, dead men land should be impacted by the Heavier shower from the northeast part of Marion County at 814, Hammond at 815, same thing for the Seville community, uh, Senya at 816, That's, and the same thing goes for Bakerstown and Shirley Place, so 816 that you may see some rain move back in for your, for your, for you guys, Connorsville at 816 as well, and the same thing goes for, well, not same thing, but as you can see, it'll be a different time. So 819 will be for the Deer Run area and Deanville at 820. So these are locations, again, between Volusia and Flackler counties. So if you live in these areas, again, in those counties, another heads up that you could see some heavier showers that's coming in from the northeastern part of the Marion County area in just uh, the next uh, 15, perhaps 20 to 25 minutes. And uh, let's go ahead and do another one right here that is, again, in this in the southern part of the county. Southeast part of the county, that is. 
And it seems like uh, it should be affecting places like Pittman at 812, Camp Ocala at 813, Alexander Springs at 814, Paisley at 815, that's in Northeast uh, Lake County, Johnson's Corner at 815. Same thing goes for the Blue Lakes Ridge community, Chano Lakes at 816. Also, the same thing goes from, for Manhattan, not the city of New York, but the small community of Florida. So yeah, Manhattan, Florida at about 816. Lake Catherine also at 816 in Bluffton at 816 as well. So this is basically in Northeast Lake County that could see some heavier showers in just a little bit as well. So just another heads up. All right, so as far as the totals go with rain that we've seen so far this evening in Central Florida, as we go ahead and take a look at the rainfall totals on Barron. And again, the rain does the heavier rain doesn't look as impressive uh, but, uh, than what we saw last night and also from earlier this week. So that's at least a good thing uh, that there that there's no uh, flood warnings or flood advisories out for tonight since the totals are not as as bad. But it looks like as we zoom in closer here into the Orlando area, especially if you go west of downtown, where you see the darker green colors, it does indicate that you folks have received about received over an inch and a half of rain in the western part of town. But if you go a little north here into southern Seminole County, so right uh, to south of downtown Winter Springs in Seminole County, it looks like you have, have you have already received over 2.2 inches of accumulating rainfall from the heavier rain tonight. Right here, Novito uh, looks like it received close to an inch of rain so far and then as we go a little farther south into osceola county so right over here towards Kissimmee, it looks like it received over 1.27 inches of rain this evening and back into polk county uh there's a couple of spotty areas where there's been some pretty good totals like right here uh between lakeland and winter haven it seems like you have received over 2.2 inches of rain from the storms this evening so far and also the same goes right here just to the south and east of Lake Wales. Well, close, but as you can see, southeast of Lake Wales has received at least nearly up to three inches of rain from the storms that uh, you folks have seen earlier today. And if we go a little farther east here, just near Lake Kissimmee, uh, looks like you've already picked up close to two inches of rain from today. So like I said, totals today were not as as bad like we have seen yesterday and Monday where we saw like over four to five inches of rain and even six inches that Stanford had seen that caused a lot of flooding uh, Sunday night. So none of that is expected here this evening. So that's a good thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at Futurecast. I'm gonna show you uh, who could see some more rain as we head into not just this evening, but even into tomorrow. And by the way, the chances of rain tomorrow looks to be low because again, we have an approaching front that'll move in uh, at least potentially overnight. And that means that some more dry air will move in for tomorrow and Friday. And that's why temperatures will be slight cooler and slightly less humid, but still there could be some showers and maybe a pop up storm behind the front. And as always, folks, if you just uh, pop again to Facebook Live on this Wednesday evening, uh, remember, I don't mind if you could y'all, if you could, if all of you can, I should say, go ahead and share this Facebook Live feed to your other Facebook followers because you know my motto, and that is uh, sharing is caring. And before we also move on, I'm going to go ahead and share this live feed to one of my other live Facebook pages. So as always, like I've been saying many times here, guys, just uh, hang tight and we will again move on to future casts with the timing of uh, some spotty showers that some folks could see as we get into the day tomorrow. All right, so here is Futurecast. So as we head into the rest of this evening, like I said, we'll see some leftover areas, scattered areas, that is, of showers and storms. 
and things will pretty much uh, taper off as we head towards the overnight. So we'll give us a quiet, uh, another quiet overnight here in Central Florida. And as the front uh, moves closer to Central Florida by daybreak, it looks like we could see maybe a few broken line of showers ahead of it to begin with uh, tomorrow morning. So like right here, back into Sanford, Apopka, uh, let's say New Smyrna and Edgewater, and also back into Southern Sumter counties. You could see, again, just a few quick moving showers ahead of that cold front as we head towards daybreak tomorrow. And then it looks like uh, uh, the, front will, the front will pass through most of Central Florida, at least after daybreak. And that means we'll see, again, some more dry, slight cooler and slightly less humid weather here for the day on Thursday. Now, as we head into the afternoon, it looks like behind the front, there could be, again, a few isolated showers, uh, this time focusing along in east of Interstate 4, but nothing too strong or severe uh, as we head again into that hour. And then as we head towards the late afternoon into the early evening, again, we'll see the same thing. Just a few isolated spotty showers uh, are not out of the question, but it's not going to be anything too widespread. And then once we head towards uh, 8, 9 o'clock, any isolated showers left over will be around the southwestern corner of Polk County. But other than that, it looks like we should, should be another quiet night here in the state. And the same thing to begin early Friday morning. So as you head out the door for, for work and school, it looks like we'll see low temperatures in the uh, low 70s. And then as we head into the rest of the day, again, any rain chances that any rain chances that do form will be just about will just be about 20 percent. So it'll just be a brief shower or so. Right now, it looks like the focus appears to be along I-4 in West, where the showers will be on Friday. But again, under the net, it will be mostly dry. And then as the clock ends all the way towards 2 a.m. early Saturday, as you can see, uh, things still looks to be mainly dry. Okay, so most of you are asking how cool it's going to get here for the next uh, few days in Central Florida since we have a front moving in overnight. Well, let's take a look at the uh, temperature part on Futurecast. I'm going to show you who could see some slightly cool temperatures for the next uh, few days. And we're going to go ahead and pinpoint the temperatures first of all. All right, so here it is. So here's the temperatures we're expecting, at least for the next uh, several hours. So heading into daybreak in the morning, again, we'll see low temperatures, as we have seen this summer, again, starting off with the 70s. But once the front does pass through for some of our northern communities behind it, that's going to bring temperatures a bit more cool. We're talking about maybe some upper 60s, like around Palm Coast, and maybe some lower 70s in places like Ocala, the Villages, and Daytona Beach. So it could be a pretty good start to begin Thursday. Could be a good start to uh, get like maybe a morning jog in uh, before you, you know, head to work in school. So if you plan on doing that, then I think you'll enjoy these uh, some slightly fall cool temperatures to begin our early Thursday. And then as we head towards the afternoon. Once the front is passed through, it looks like we'll see temperatures again. Uh, still, again, remain on the warmer side, but again, will not be as extremely hot or extremely humid behind it because we're talking about mainly, mainly temperatures uh, in the mid to upper 80s especially in our inland uh, places but if you go a little farther east towards i-95 temperatures will be a little more cooler uh, than what inland places will see so like titusville can see a high temperature tomorrow at 82 83 possibly tomorrow for the high in daytona beach and 79 could be the high temperature tomorrow in palm coast that could be the coolest day that palm coast could see for tomorrow as it gets uh, close to 80. So it could be a pretty nice day again to get outside and enjoy these uh, slightly cool fall-like conditions. All right, now heading into evening, once the sun sets, we'll see temperatures uh, fall into the 70s and some around low 80s, especially in the villages in Lakeland. But other than that, we'll be below 80 degrees between six and eight. So perfect for evening plans if you have some outdoors. And then heading, heading into the overnight hours late tomorrow night and to begin early Friday, look at this. As we, as we begin early Friday, we're talking about temperatures starting off in some places in the mid to upper 60s, especially if you go north of Orlando, like Titusville, Sanford, Ocala, the Villages, Daytona Beach, and Palm Coast. We're talking about a very, very cool fall-like start to the day uh, Friday morning with lows in the mid 60s. Others, like Orlando South, will be in the low 70s, but still not too bad to begin 
to begin uh, the early morning hours of uh, Friday. But if you notice these green shaded colors uh, on the map, especially if you go towards northern Florida, like Jacksonville, or perhaps the Panhandle, there could even be some 50s to begin with early Friday. So it could be a little chilly uh, for northern Florida. But uh, at least, you know, it, at least, you know, it will cool. It will be cooling things down. Uh, at least to begin with. And then afterwards, as we head towards the rest of the day on Friday, again, we'll see temperatures remain average with mid 80s all across the entire state, especially inland. But if we go towards the coast of I-95, temperatures will be in the upper 70s and low 80s Friday afternoon. So looking perfect, again, for outdoor plans to end the work week. And if you got any plans for the evening on Friday, it looks like it should be fine as temperatures remain in the low to mid 70s for uh, at least north of Orlando, but if you go towards the metro, temperatures will be in the upper 70s. So, yeah, not too bad. And then, in the clock towards 2 a.m. early Saturday, take a look. You could see another start to the day, especially the weekend, of course, with some lows in the 60s north of Orlando and Orlando South, maybe some low 70s again. So, so if you like that, then enjoy. All right, so let's, so next thing we'll go ahead and take a look at is the tropics. And yes, it is still quite busy out there tonight in the Atlantic as we are still in the active portion of hurricane season. So as we go ahead and turn on the uh, tropical satellite and show you where these active storms are at tonight. Let's be turned on the uh, forecast tracks. And here it is. So uh, the only two storms we have, we have been watching for the past few days are the remnants of tropical storms Rose and Peter, but a new storm has developed uh, in the Atlantic, and that was from that disturbance that we have been watching also for the past few days. And that is uh, what is now, I believe, uh, tropical depression number, let's see here, tropical depression number 18. So yes, that is the is, yeah is, is the 18th depression that has just formed in, in the Atlantic this evening, and winds are still not too bad as it gusts up to about 35 miles per hour, and it's moving due west at 15. But it looks like it's just strengthened into a tropical storm by the overnight hours, and our next name of the list will be called Tropical Storm Sam, and uh, it seems like it'll stay as a tropical storm as it moves west here in the next few days. But by the time we get into the second half of this weekend, and maybe even to early next week. Sam could become into a Cat 1, at least for Saturday and Sunday, and up to a Cat 2, and then into a major hurricane, which is a Cat 3, by Monday afternoon. And there's still, there's still some uncertainties right now of where it's going to turn next. Uh, one model has been showing over the past few days of this uh, going to a right turn to the north, and the other uh, showed or does show recently, you know, it's going to be moving due west and could make, could, could make some impacts for the eastern portions of the Caribbean. So that is something, again, we'll have to keep a close eye on. But for right now, we don't know if this, if this is going to be heading up, heading into our state or not, or make landfall in parts of the United States. But again, that is something that we'll still have to uh, uh, keep a close eye on, because remember, we're still in the active part of hurricane season. So I'll keep you posted. But what's left of Peter and Rose continues to remain as a tropical depression this evening. And as you can see, that uh, there's still lots of signs of weakening for both of these uh, uh, weak, weaker storms. And again, still no impacts for the United States for the next few days, and that is a good thing. But if we, see, if we go take a look back towards the African coast, right now it looks like there are oh, there's still a lot of uh, tropical downpours and some gusty winds with with these uh, bands over towards the coast of Africa this evening. So we'll have to watch that closely if it will turn into a disturbance or not. So something to watch too. But elsewhere across the Caribbean, like right here in the central part of the Caribbean islands and also around the Gulf, it looks to be pretty quiet uh, this evening. So no, so no active uh, storms to worry about for those areas in the next uh, several days. So the focus again for right now is just around most of the Atlantic. So that's the update in the update on the tropics. So before we get into the GFS, let's get one more look at the radar and see again what's going on in Central Florida, especially for those that are just popping into Facebook Live uh, right now or just maybe a few minutes ago. As I turn on the uh, again the Melbourne radar, 
And again, the only thing we're seeing here that's, that's left here is just just a few scattered evening storms and a couple of uh, showers over portions of our viewing area, especially including right here in Orange County, just south of downtown Orlando, and also some right near Oviedo in the eastern corner of Seminole County, some just south of Kissimmee and Osceola, southern Polk and eastern Marion counties. And again, they'll move. They'll, they're they're, they're going to continue to move from west to east until they start to fall apart in the next uh, one to two hours. So there you uh, pretty much have it here, guys. So next thing we'll go ahead and take a look at is the GFS models. It's going to be happening here for the next uh, couple of days, and not just in Florida, but also across portions of the portions of the uh, southeast U.S. And I bet, I bet most of you are hearing some of that music in the background, and it's coming from somebody's uh, house, not in my street that I live in, but in another uh, section of my subdivision. Must be a party going on or something. But I can really, really hear it from here. All right, now here is the GFS. Let's get into the weekend. I mean, with uh, Saturday, that is uh, September 25th. And again, weather-wise, looks to stay pretty calm. So talking about another sunny day here in Central Florida uh, with, uh, with uh, not a whole lot of rain to talk about, I have to say. So any rain that does develop on Saturday looks to stay south in South Florida. And as we take a look at our high temperatures, and since we'll see some dry weather on Saturday, uh, it will be warmer, but not really as extremely humid or hot like we have been seeing this summer. So we'll, we'll, mostly, we'll mostly be in the mid to upper 80s for highs as we head towards the day on Saturday, especially inland. But if we go towards the coastal areas of I-95, it looks like temperatures will stay in the mid 80s, maybe some low 80s possible. So that's a little cool as we approach that day, too. But if you need some more cooler weather, you may have to go north because temperatures across the Mississippi Valley region remains in the mid to upper 70s and some even low 80s, which could feel pretty good. Uh, for these folks that live up in the in the uh, valley region, as fall finally arrives, again not much here in Florida, but again for the rest of the United States. And by the way, today is the first day of fall. In case if you didn't, if you guys didn't know. <laughs> All right, now here is Sunday, September twenty sixth. And again, things still look to stay pretty calm, but I can't rule out maybe a few isolated showers for some of our folks south and west of Orlando. So we'll call for just about a 20% coverage if that is the case. But any high rain chances that do de develop on Sunday looks to stay down in South Florida. So a little bit of a soaker for folks in, uh, in Fort Myers, Miami, where there'll be some scattered late day showers and storms. But again, not much here in our viewing area. So it's a pretty good day. It could be a pretty good day that day to uh, spend time with your relatives or your friends or friends outdoors. And our temperatures, again, looks to stay pretty warm with upper 80s, but some could even hit 90 in some lo localized places. But other than that, it'll just be in the 80s here in the state. But again, if you need a little more cool weather, it looks like the, the coolest temperatures will be mostly along I-95 where there'll be some lower 80s on that day. But notice far the north, north you go, again, into the Mississippi Valley, temperatures may remain in the upper 70s and even into the low 80s. So it looks like it may warm up just a little bit, but not much. But still, it'll be staying more in the way of fall for the Mississippi Valley region as we head into the day on Sunday. All right, now here, here is uh, Monday of next week. So as we head into uh, September 27th, Monday of next week, again, we could see is still some more showers possible, but again, the rain chances remain slow at 30% or less. So nothing too widespread to worry about, but other than that, I think most of us should be looking to be mainly dry. And again, the high temperatures that day looks to stay warm with mid to upper 80s inland, low 80s along the coast of I-95. And again, Mississippi Valley region will still be a little bit cooler, but mostly getting back to average where There'll be some low to mid 80s for, again, the high temps as we approach that day on Monday. And 
weekend. Here is Tuesday of next week, September 28th. And again, we'll still see some more showers and maybe a few thunderstorms possible, but nothing too widespread to worry about. So we'll just give, out, give it about a 30% coverage of some of that shower and thunder shower activity here in the state on that day. And uh, again, as, as we take a look at those high temperatures, and again, we'll be mostly average with mid 80s. So not too bad uh, for temperatures here in the state. Of course, it'll still be warmer, but not as extremely humid or hot like we have been seeing earlier in the summer days. So not expecting any of that here in the next coming days. So that's a good thing to hear. So we'll just be in the 80s category. And even the same thing also for the folks up in the, in the Mississippi Valley region. So all of the Southeast will see temperatures staying average by the end of this week, the weekend, and perhaps into the first half of next week. We could take it. And here is a week from today. This takes you to Wednesday, September 29th. And it looks like, again, things looks to stay pretty calm and quiet. Can't well out maybe a brief shower or two in some spots. But other than that, it looks like we'll be looking pretty rain-free for most of us. And again, look at those high temperatures. We'll be staying mainly average with mid to upper 80s. And also the same thing will continue to be that way for our folks up in the Mississippi Valley region. And here is a week from tomorrow. This takes you to Thursday, the last day of September, the 30th I'm talking about. And it looks like uh, there could be a little bit of rain that may try to move into some of our coastal communities of Central Florida. So anywhere from, let's say, Melbourne, Titusville, Palm Bay, uh, maybe some folks in eastern, eastern Osceola, or yeah, eastern Osceola and eastern Orange County, there could be maybe a few showers, uh, possibly on Thursday, September 30th. But it looks like the rest of the state looks to stay pretty calm as far as conditions go. So, so just keep that in mind. And once again, high temperatures looks to stay average with mainly mid to upper 80s. So not bad there. And there could even could and there could even be some upper 80s. Maybe some could even hit 90 again uh, if you go north across the Mississippi Valley region by the day on Thursday, September 30th. Now, as we enter Friday, the first day of October, again, uh, weather-wise looks to be not widespread, not 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 not, not nothing too widespread, as you say. Uh, but again, if you go towards the east of Interstate 4, there could be some showers and maybe a couple of storms that could try to cool off temperatures a little bit. But again, it's not expecting to be a total washout. But uh, if you got some big plans outdoors on that day, if you plan on going to Disney to, uh, to uh, I guess, uh, check out all the experiences for the 50th anniversary celebration. Yes, the kickoff begins next Friday. Uh, you should be pretty okay for now. So we'll see how the weather does here as we get into the next uh, week or so. Or if you got some other plans, so if you're not going to Disney next Friday, and if you got other plans outdoors, like going to Universal, SeaWorld, or maybe anything fun. Again, not too bad. But again, if you go, if you plan on going to the beach on the 1st of October, especially for our folks around I-95, again, just be aware that there could be some showers and maybe even a few uh, thunder showers. But again, nothing too major to worry about as far as severe weather and heavy rain goes. Besides that, we'll see temperatures again stay pretty warm, but again, not as humid with upper, with mid to upper 80s as we approach that day. And there could even be even some upper 80s too if you go north across the Mississippi Valley, especially if you live in Alabama towards Mississippi, but if you go towards most of Georgia and the Carolinas, temperatures will be average in the middle 80s. All right, now here is uh, not this Saturday, but next Saturday, October 2nd, and it looks like uh, the rain chances may increase even may increase even a bit more, especially, again, if you go towards I-4 and east. So for now, we'll just call for about a 40% coverage of some showers and maybe some tropical downpours that may try to, again, push back into some of our uh, for some of our places in our viewing area. But if you go towards the west of Interstate 4, it uh, looks like the uh, model is showing that the rain chances will be lesser. So again, something we could watch, but, you know, things could change as we head closer to the first weekend of the new month. And speaking of Saturday the 2nd, temperatures will be looking cooler, a little more cooler, that is, as some rain does redevelop again with upper 70s and low 80s. So not bad 
And even there'll be some temperatures in the upper 70s and to the mid 80s for, again, the rest of the southeast, including the Mississippi Valley region. All right, now here is the land of voodoo country that we're entering this evening, and this takes you to Sunday, October 3rd, and still some rain continues around central Florida. Again, the better chances looks to be run along and east of Interstate 4 with just a 40% coverage, but if you go down towards, uh, well, let's say, near Jupiter, Florida, it looks like uh, there could be some locally heavy rain that could add up totals between one to two inches. So, again, that is something we could uh, watch, but again, it's just too early to make a call on this. So that's why changes could be made to the models as we head closer to the first weekend of October and the first full new week, new week as well. And again, with temperatures, it's going to get even more cooler as uh, numbers do go down into the 70s and perhaps lower 80s as we approach today on Sunday, October 3rd. And there will, there will even be some 70s and 80s as well if you go north into the Mississippi Valley region. So yeah, I think we could use some more cool temperatures uh, as we, again, uh, as we're about to almost exit September and as we're almost about to enter the new month of October. And uh, here is Monday, October 4th, two weeks from this past Monday, and it looks like the rain chances are going to continue to increase more, and some could be heavy at times especially here in central Florida, like right here or right up towards Daytona Beach, I should say. So Daytona Beach, Palm Coast, Orlando, uh, Paisley. It looks like there could be some uh, pretty good totals that could range between one to three inches, according to what I'm seeing here on the GFS, and maybe the same thing, but even uh, three inches or more rain down in south Florida. So, yeah, that is something we'll have to uh, keep an eye out. But, again, it's just two weeks early to tell. So that's why, you know, the model trends could could likely change as we head closer, so I'll keep you posted. And because of the rain that will continue to increase by Monday the 4th, that's going to keep, again, temperatures uh, below 80. So we'll see some 70s likely, possibly, if that is correct. But if you go a little north, again, temperatures will be a, a little bit warmer, mostly average, where there'll be some low to middle 80s as we approach that day, too. But otherwise, not bad for the southeast temperature-wise as we head towards the next uh, couple of weeks. Now, here is Tuesday, October 5th, and still the rain chances remains pretty quite high here around the state. And again, some could be heavy at times for areas along I-95 and others also to the north where there could be one to three inches possible of accumulating rainfall. So again, that is something we'll have to uh, monitor. But again, it's too early to make a call on this. So, so this is why I call it land of voodoo because changes could be likely made as we head closer to the next uh, couple of weeks. But temperatures look to, looks to warm back up somewhat a bit, but mostly still average with upper 70s and mid 80s to remain as we approach that day. And there will also be some more cooler temperatures north you go where there'll be some, where there'll be some 70s and even mid 80s for highs on the day on Tuesday, October 5th. All right, now here is two weeks from today. This takes you to Wednesday, October 6th, and still more and more rain continues right here in the southeast, especially here in central Florida. And again, some could be heavy at times, not just for here in the Sunshine State, but also up north across the coast of Georgia, like Savannah, and even up towards Charleston, South Carolina, could see some heavier rain, uh, possibly from that disturbance as we head towards that towards the day on October 6th. So. Remember, just keep checking back with me here on Facebook Live for any changes because it's two weeks early to tell and it will likely change weather-wise as we hit closer. But uh, temperature-wise here in Central Florida, again, keeping things cool in the low to mid 80s. But if you go a little farther south into uh, Southeast Florida, like around Fort Lauderdale, Jupiter, and Miami, there could even be some summer-like temperatures to make a comeback with upper 80s and low 90s. Kind of too late for that for October. But if you go even more north across the panhandle of Florida, Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, there could even be some much cooler fall-like temperatures with 60s, 70s, and low 80s. So it's going to be feeling more, more, and more, more the way of like of fall temperatures, uh, if that if the trend is correct. And you just hear that—that that was a rumble, a big rumble of thunder. If you guys can hear it in the background. Go 
Okay, now here is two weeks from tomorrow. This takes you to Thursday, October 7th. And the good news is that uh, the rain chances will start to wind things down to a 30% coverage. So all the heavier activity will, will be pushing up towards the north into the eastern U.S. So at least we'll get a little bit of a break from the from the higher rain chances that we could see to kick off October. But again, it could change. So we'll keep you, I'll keep you posted. But if you notice the temperatures as we get into the, the day on Thursday, October 7th, you can tell that it may start to feel more like summer again by that day as the temperatures get back into the upper 80s and some maybe back, maybe even back into the low 90s. So, yeah, it may feel like summer again here in the state. Again, it'll be late for that, but, you know, sometimes this happens on some days in October right here in the southeast. But if you go north you go, temperatures will not be still as hot like what Florida could see as a return for that day. So instead, there'll be some upper 70s and even perhaps mid 80s as we head into the day on Thursday the 7th. And last but not least, this uh, GFS trend uh, takes you at least to the end of Friday, October 8th. And again, the rain chances continues to decrease, but it looks like there could be some average chances of rain if you live along and east of I-4, especially if you go from Edgewater all the way down towards Lakeland. So there'll be just about a 40% shot of some uh, showers and maybe some leftover storms. Uh, if you need some dry weather, it looks like it, for now, it appears to be just to the north and west of Orlando. If the trend, once again, is correct. And finally, here's a look at those high temperatures for the day on Friday the 8th. And again, we'll be feeling more like summer again with upper 80s and perhaps some low 90s. And it could be, and look like the same thing could even happen uh, again for the folks up in the Mississippi Valley, the lower part, that is, of the valley, where there'll be some upper 80s and low 90s for the highs once again for Friday, October 8th. So, so again, we'll have to keep a close eye on uh, the models here as we get into the next uh, couple of weeks because, again, some rain could form again by early in the month and also maybe some summer light temperatures to make a comeback by the end of the first week. But uh, right here, but, I'm, but, one, but, one, what am, but what am I, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this uh, Facebook live feed. So, uh, so that's it for the forecast video update. And again, I expect to have the next uh, live update here on Facebook tomorrow night at 8 p.m. And I'll continue as Always by posting my notes or updates on my blog and Facebook pages 24-7. But in the meantime, hope you all enjoy the rest of your Wednesday night. Remember to uh, take care of yourselves and each other, and God bless.